Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our 10 a.m. Mass at St. Charles Borromeo Church. This weekend, the Church continues to experience the joy of Easter, with the readings highlighting the implications of Jesus' resurrection. Repentance should be our attitude in light of our sins, which God faithfully responds to with his mercy. The joy that the Church experiences in the presence of the risen Christ should translate into favour of all to be his witness in the world. Entering into this celebration of the Eucharist, may we be encouraged to lead others towards God's love, which has been revealed so clearly to us. Our celebrant this morning is Father Dan Drum. Please stand for our opening hymn. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So welcome everyone. So you can see I'm not Father Greg. I'm, I'm bigger, more handsome. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, no, very beautiful to be with you. Father Greg's actually away this weekend. He's um, on a cadet camp with Holy Cross College. So especially it's a beautiful chance for him to get out there and away from all of us. And, and to enjoy and, and to teach some of the leaders in Holy Cross College how to, how to lead, how to be responsible. So I'm filling in for him. I think today we don't actually have kids' liturgy. So all the kids, you're going to have to put up with Father's homily. So I'm sorry, but you, hopefully you'll enjoy. Yeah? But wonderful to have you all with us. So we're, we're praying in a special way today for what happened yesterday in Bondi Junction. So we pray for all the people who lost their lives, all the people who were injured. And we pray for the soul as well of the person who did it. Uh, obviously a very tormented soul, so we pray for him. And we're praying in a special way today in this Mass for uh, Anna Maria Parisi. She died 11 months ago, so we pray for her. We pray for all of her family. Pray also for uh, Ida Diaz, in remembrance of her as well. So we take all those things to God, and we begin our Mass as we do in every Mass by saying sorry for those times when we haven't been so open to God in our lives especially to his resurrection, which he wants to bring to us. Let's say sorry for our sins together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God 
God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God and on earth. Peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God and on earth. Peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, glory to God and on earth. Peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, glory to God and on earth, peace to people of good will. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Have our readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, You are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate, after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold when he said through all his prophets that, this, that his Christ would suffer. Now you must repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish you released me. Have mercy and hear me. Lord, let your face shine on us. It is the Lord who grants favours to those whom he loves. 
The Lord hears me whenever I call him. Lord, let your face shine on us. What can bring us happiness, many say. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lord, let your face shine on us. I will lie down in peace, and sleep comes at once. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Lord, let your face shine on us. A reading from the first letter of St John. I'm writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate, the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus, make, make your, your word plain, plain to us. us. Make, make our, our hearts burn, burn with love when you speak. speak. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognised Jesus at the breaking of the bread. They were still talking about this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, Why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Their joy was so great that they could not believe it. And they stood dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. And he told them, This is what I meant when I said, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, So you see how it is written that the Christ would suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Lord. So have you ever had an experience where you struggled to believe something that happened was actually true. Maybe for you who uh, are married, maybe it was when someone asked you to marry them. And you're going, wait a minute, they're asking me. And they know me, and they're still asking me to get married. Or maybe it's when you asked someone to marry you, and they said yes. And you're going, my goodness, they actually said yes. It takes a while to sink in a lot of the time. And after you get married, takes a while. It's like I often meet couples and they're still, still touching myself. I still talk about her like she's my girlfriend and she's my wife. Still think of him as, as like the, this guy who I, I met ages ago. It takes time for things to, to sink in. I was remembering myself. 
when I was ordained a priest just a few years ago, I was lying on the floor of the cathedral. I was going, what am I doing here? My goodness. Then I had the archbishop, he's putting his hands on my head. He's anointing my hands with oil in front of everyone. He, I'm putting vestments on. The next thing I know, I'm standing behind the altar at St. Mary's Cathedral, in that beautiful, huge cathedral, and I'm celebrating Mass. I'm going, wait a minute, this is me. This is Dan. How can I be there? And then after the Mass, everyone's going, Father Dan, Father Steve. And it's like, wait a minute. And, and they, you still, even for weeks afterwards, someone's going, Father, can you do... Who are they talking to? <laughs> takes time, and it takes a long time to adjust. So it took me a lot of time to adjust to being a priest. Things like hearing confessions. You get in, out of the confession, you go, my goodness, oh, my, my, my goodness. Thank goodness I have a good, good um, capacity for forgetting. Yeah? <laughs> Celebrating the Mass, and then you're watching, you're worried. My, my, I think my second Mass, I managed to knock over the chalice and spill... Before it was consecrated, so it was okay. But made a big mess right on the live stream and everything in front of everyone. It was really things like giving people the anointing of the sick, celebrating funerals, baptizing children. It took a long time for me to adjust. It gradually sunk in. Something was different. Something had changed. And I did a lot of preparation beforehand, but it was still it took time for that new reality, reality to actually sink into me. That's kind of what we're hearing in the Gospel today. So this is actually the third episode about the resurrection in the Gospel of Luke. The first one was when some angels appeared to Mary Magdalene and some other women, said, Jesus is resurrected, go and tell the disciples. They went and told the disciples, and they said, oh, that's nonsense, that's just old wives' tales, as if that was going to happen. Then he appeared to two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus, he had this big, long conversation with them. He celebrated the Eucharist with them. They finally recognised it was him, and then he disappeared. They ran all the way back to Jerusalem and told the disciples. And the disciples were going, mm, don't know if that could really happen. So the disciples had had the preparation, but when Jesus appears to them himself, he says, peace be with you. Does it sound like they're full of peace? It says, No. They're alarmed, they're frightened, they think he's a ghost. So what does Jesus do to try and help them? He tries to calm them down. He says, why are you so agitated? Why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. They're real hands, they're real feet. It's I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones, as you can see I have. He said, come on guys, it's me. I'm Jesus. I'm real. Touch me. Let me slap you. In. No, I don't know if he did that, but let me slap you in the face. <laughs> and they touch him, and they're, they're still struggling, even when they're touching, they're still struggling to believe. They're still dumbfounded by joy, it says. Seems too good to be true. How can Jesus possibly be alive? We saw him get crucified, we saw the Romans kill him. Romans do a good job when they crucify people. Huh? They make sure you're dead. They even stuck a spear in his side just to make sure. it. So Jesus says, okay, have you got anything to eat? I'm a bit hungry. I haven't eaten for three days. I've been in the tomb. So give me something to eat. They give him a piece of grilled fish. He takes it. He eats it before their eyes. The disciples had difficulty. They had a lot of difficulty to believe in the resurrection. And if we've had those experiences of doubt and adaptation and big changes, I think we can understand where they're coming from. Jesus' death was a big shock to them. They had all these plans. They're thinking he's going to be like the next king. They're thinking he's going to be someone. Think and then he told them he was going to die again and again and again. But when it actually happened, it was such a shock to their system. And I think we can relate to that because we all know in the back of our minds that one day we too will die. One day our loved ones will die. But we often avoid thinking about that and what it means. Many times we live as though we're going to live forever. We live as though life is just about money and career, where I'm going to eat dinner tonight, that new dress that I have to have, 
that car that's going to change my life because it's an electric car, but it's hybrid, so then I can do both. And it's like, what Jesus' resurrection is supposed to do is to shake us up out of that way of thinking, to remind us that death is real, and we need to know that, but also death is not the end. Jesus, God has something even better planned for us after death. So what? it's an invitation to, to live with that resurrection in mind and to live a resurrected life here and now. Because the resurrection is not just about after we die. It's supposed to affect how we live here and now in this life. A resurrected life is one where we start to choose for God all the time where we start to choose against sin, against temptation, as we're invited to by John in that second reading. It says at the beginning of that second reading, I'm writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. Because sin is his spiritual death. It's this choice we make which hurts God, which hurts others, which hurts us, which kills that relationship with God. But just like physical death can't keep Jesus down, sin and spiritual death can't keep Jesus down either. He's made it possible for even sin to be overcome, to be undone, to be forgiven, to be removed. So we hear John saying, but if anyone should sin, don't sin, but if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away. And not only ours, but the whole world's. Jesus is death. His resurrection, they take, it takes away our sins, the sins of the whole world. That's what he wants to do. He wants us to be set free from our sins, set free from that burden of guilt, of doubt, of fear that sin lays upon our shoulders. But he's not just talking about our sins in the past, but also our sins in the future. He wants to take away our bad habits, our vices, those bad choices where we choose wealth or pleasure or looking good, over loving him and loving others. Where we start to build good habits which help us to live a resurrected life. He gently invites us, he gently tries to convince us that his way is the best way. Following his commandments will make us and others most happy. So as John says at the end of that second reading, when anyone does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in us in him. And that's what Jesus wants for us. He wants that perfect love, that love that's like his, that love can love even the the people who seem unlovable. Maybe you have a few people in your life who you think, oh, I don't know if it's possible to love this person. Your boss at times, yeah? Or even the the priest who's your brother who lives in the same house. This love that can forgive even the things that seem unforgivable. But he knows that it's a process to get there because he understands that many times, just like the disciples, we have all the facts, we have all the experiences, but it takes time to sink in. That's why we have seven weeks of Easter. The resurrection, sometimes we can go, okay, I've done my resurrection, I've eaten my Easter eggs, of um, being to Mass and Good Friday, Holy Thursday, or Easter Sunday. But no, the resurrection continues on. Those seven weeks of Easter are for us to allow God to give us more of that resurrection experience. So it sinks in, so it makes a difference in our lives. Because he realises that many times the problem is not bad intentions, it's not that we were made bad, But when we sin, it's it's often because we don't know, we don't realise what we're doing. So, like St Peter tells the crowd in the first reading, he's talking about how they contributed to Jesus being crucified. He says, Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. If they hadn't realised who Jesus really was, they wouldn't have done it. And that's the truth many times. Many people in the world, many of us at times, We're unaware, we're ignorant of what we're doing when we sin. So Jesus comes, he came to show us the truth, to show us what we're made for. He shows us what we're capable of, for good, but also for bad. So when we get to know him, he takes away that blindness, that ignorance. He opens up our eyes little by little to the fullness of the truth, 
to the perfection of love, to not just fix up that problem of ignorance in us, but also in many others. So he doesn't just show himself to the disciples and fill them with the joy of the resurrection. He goes, I'm sending you out to share that joy with the world so that other people experience that joy of the resurrection in them too. And that's actually the fullness of joy for us. I often used to think the fullness of joy was being set free from my sins. You go to confession, you do a really good examination of conscience, you walk out of the confessional, you leave all that behind with Father, you're 10 kilos lighter because I've got rid of all my sins. Or maybe those moments when I have a really beautiful experience of prayer, when I feel how much God loves me, how much he, he, I love him. But I've actually learned that as awesome as it is to be forgiven for my sins, to get to know Jesus, to get to be with him, even better is being an instrument, being a vehicle so that he can arrive to other lives, so he can forgive other people's sins. I really enjoyed, for example, working with our youth groups, working in our schools, watching people grow up in the faith, watching them change little by little into the people who they were created to be. I love working in our RCIA program, seeing adults develop a living relationship with, with Jesus and become part of the church, seeing people who are a long way away from God, little by little, get closer, little by little, develop a real relationship with him. Just yesterday morning, I baptised a little one-month-old boy coming from a very Catholic family. So beautiful welcoming a new member of the family into the church. I often tell people, I'm one of nine, so I'm used to lots of brothers and sisters. But every time I do a baptism, I have another brother, I have another sister. At 11.30 today, Father Daniele is going to baptise five kids here in this church. Five new brothers and sisters. When we were baptised... We were chosen, we were anointed by God to be a priest, a prophet and a king. To imitate Jesus in his priesthood, in his sacrifice. To imitate Jesus in his proclamation of the kingdom. To imitate Jesus in his loving service. Sometimes we look at ourselves and go, mm, I don't know if I can do that. We see our wounds, we see our weaknesses, we see our limitations, we see our sins. And Jesus is saying, yep, all that's true. It's all part of your story. But you're much more than that. You too can go out there and live like me. You too can share about me to your family, to your friends, to your workmates. For sure there will be moments where you feel like you're on the cross, you're dead, you're too weak, you're too sinful, you're too tempted to do that. But don't worry. Death, sin, weakness, temptation, all of that's been overcome by Jesus in himself, but also in us. So we have seven weeks of Easter to let this truth sink in, to let Jesus convince us that this is possible. We can be his true followers. We can live like him. We can speak like him. We can act like him. He's very patient. He'll keep working no matter how slow or ignorant or resistant we are. He won't give on, up on us until his resurrection comes in and transforms our life. So let's pray that we can allow him to do that. We can work with the grace that he's offering us, that he's pouring out in our lives. Let's pray that through us, the truth of his resurrection can reach many lives that are dark and hurting and sick and dead. Let's pray that the joy of the resurrection transforms our lives, makes it different, makes us live in a different way. And through us, this world, which can often be sad and lonely and violent, as we learnt yesterday, can be transformed more and more into the kingdom of God that it was created to be. Let's all stand together. Let's profess our faith in this God who was resurrected but also wants to resurrect us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the risen Jesus continues to call us to repentance so that God's love can come to perfection in us. We pray that Pope Francis' April prayer intention for all women will respect their dignity and their lives, will be free of all discrimination. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the world, that all wars, violence and terrorism might come to an end. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for each other, that like the disciples with minds open and graced with forgiveness, we can be witnesses to the risen Jesus in the daily circumstances of our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering from natural disasters in Australia and around the world, that they will be released from despair and fear and receive all the help they need. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for men and women who have died because of domestic violence in wars and through poverty, that they may feast at the eternal banquet of the Lamb. We especially pray for all those who have passed away recently in our parish. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for you know, all the people uh, killed and wounded in the incident yesterday at Bondi Junction. We pray that the Lord can um, bring a lot of healing into this area. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way too for the repose of the soul of Anna Maria Parisi and Ida Diaz. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, through you, the Father's love comes to perfection in us. Empower us to witness to that love by the way in which we live in the world. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You can all be seated. We can take up our first collection, which is for the, the priests in our diocese. We can also um, take up our offertory. Savior of the world. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Anthony, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Pray in a special way for Anna Maria, 
for Ida, for all those who were killed in the Bondi Junction incident yesterday. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Charles Borromeo, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. So at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with Michael. Peace with you. 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 Love God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
So just a few parish announcements. So if you read Father Greg's column, you'll see um, he's been writing about the proposed Greenwich Equality Bill. So um, he discusses some of the, the main issues there. So we've got a few issues that, about it from a Catholic point of view, from a family values point of view. There's also an article in last week's Catholic Weekly, Monica Dumit goes through some of the issues there. So um, we encourage you to, to take the home the bulletin, and respond to the survey and say that you oppose um, the, the bits in the, in the equality bill, which we don't really agree with, which aren't in line with our Catholic faith, which aren't in line with the values that we want to teach and share in our schools. Okay. Second thing is, um, you know, Noah's Ark is now closed, so it had its last day on Thursday. So we're looking at possible options for replacing it. So one of the options is that they actually have a little mobile Noah's Ark, which they're thinking they might sell to us, but we need people to help keep it going and make sure we offer coffee on Sunday mornings and other foods and stuff like that. So um, if you want to be a part of that, if you're, or you had ideas, you have a big brainwave, big inspiration of the Holy Spirit, come along on Wednesday evening. So Wednesday the 17th of April, we're having a meeting in the parish hall at 7.30 about possible options. So please come along. Um, school, the kids' liturgy won't be on again next week, I think, or the week after, and then the week after that will be back. So two more weeks of having our kids enjoy the beauty, beauty of our homilies. Yeah? Very good. Okay, uh, no more announcements. If you'd all like to stand, let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have an amazing Sunday, everyone. to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my death to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I come to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the cross to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name.